I understand that some of you, you know, some of you who voted for Hillary, and some of you who consistently vote Democrat, but at the same time, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say that 60 to 70 percent of the Jews, all Jews, whether you voted for Hillary or Trump, are Israel supporters. I'm just going to tell you one simple thing. The people on the Antifa side are not in agreement with you when it comes to Israel. Their whole mantra is free Palestine. Their whole mantra is that Israel's occupying Palestine, occupying Arab land. When they say free Palestine, they're not talking about the West Bank. They're talking about the entirety of what today is the land of Israel. To the Jews who are on the right-wing side of the spectrum, the conservative side of the spectrum, who voted for Trump and who voted together with the alt-right and with you know, these neo-Nazis and et cetera, et cetera, I would just tell you, don't, don't pick the side that you voted with. Because those people hate you too. The alt-right, or part of the alt-right, not the entirety of it, the David Duke portion of it, the KKK portion of it, the supremacist portion of it, doesn't like you either. Doesn't like all Jews. Doesn't matter who we voted for. This is a this is a recurring theme in Jewish history. We've every place we've lived in the diaspora, there's always two or three groups that end up within that country that end up pitted against each other. And what happens is some of us Jews, we choose one side or the other. And we claim that we are, you know, German, Ukrainian, Spanish, Dutch, Italian, English, all those things of the Mosaic persuasion or of the Mosaic faith. So, so we are, we claim to be first X nationality and second, we are just so happen, we just so happen to be Jews or a protected minority or a you know, whatever what have you some kind of like minority status in the diaspora country so therefore we or we're just a religion we're just another you know recognized religious group just like the muslims and the christians and the buddhists and the baha'i and the you know whoever so i'm here to tell you that we are a nation who were scattered throughout the world two thousand years ago we live in the diaspora Wherever we live, whether it's Canada, America, Australia, South Africa, Argentina, Russia, Ukraine, it doesn't matter how prominent we are, it doesn't matter how much money we have, it doesn't matter how powerful we are. We, we could be the second in command to the president, to the prime minister, to the dictator, whoever it is. We are a guest in the said diaspora country. We are a guest in Canada, we are a guest in Australia, we are a guest in Russia and Ukraine, especially in America. We can have billions, we can have our names on the plaques of the walls of a hospital or a building or a museum. We could have our name in the movie credits, we can have, we, we can be so influential we could have built half of the country or half of the major cities in, in the country. It doesn't matter. We're a guest. On top of that, after 2,000 years, by miracle, which has never happened to anyone else on this planet, we somehow, <clears throat> excuse me, got our country back after being kicked out by the Romans. We not only, only did, our, did, did we get our country back, we got an army back. We have a government. We, have, we revived our language from being dead to everyday use. It's not exactly how it was. It's called Lashon Kodesh in the Torah, but it's conversational Hebrew. We're alive. We're, we're a revived nation. And what we have to understand is that we are not Americans with a Jewish religion. We are Jews. We are Hebrews who just happen to be living in the United States or wherever it is that we live, or Russia or Ukraine. You know, I'll tell you, I was born in the Ukraine. 
Um, if anybody knows the history of Ukraine and also Russia, I was, you know, Soviet Union, the way that they treated Jews over the years, I, I don't really understand how any person, any Jew currently living in Russia, Ukraine, or any other former Soviet country can claim to be a proud Ukrainian or a proud Russian. Or, you know, fight for the Ukrainian army or the separatists or the Russian army. You know, Natan Sharansky famously said about the, uh, you know, the Sunnis and the Shiites, I give them both, both a bracha for success. I give them both a blessing for success. I will say the same thing about the Russians and the Ukrainians. In their war, I give them both a bracha for success. I have, I, I want no part of it. It's not my fight. Just like in the war between Antifa in the United States and the alt-right, I want no part of it. I really want no part of it because there, for the most part, there are elements in this, in either movement, most of the, most of the, these movements, the prominent elements don't like the Jews. And if you say, well, these guys are fringe movements, these guys belong on the fringe of, the, of society, or do not fall asleep on something that is considered quote-unquote fringe. Hitler wrote his famous book, Mein Kampf, when he was in prison, when his group was quote-unquote fringe. I look at anything that's fringe today as being, is having the possibility of becoming mainstream tomorrow. Somebody like an Obama tried to run for president for a few years. There was a few people that tried to run for president, who was people who were the same political uh, views and stances as Obama. They tried to run for years and years and years, and then from, starting from the 70s all, all the way up until you know uh, the beginning of the 2000s, during the election of Bush and Kerry. And at that time, it didn't work because those people were on the fringes, they were on the far left. And then something happened, the economy collapsed. So when that happens, a person like Obama, or even a person like Trump on the other side, can come in and take power. Furthermore, fringe movements, extreme movements, can take power. The extreme movements, both of them, in, in their own special, unique way, hate the Jews. Antifa is against Israel, and the alt-right are against this kind of canard of uh, the Jews running the world or the Jews running America. They were marching in Charlottesville saying, it started out sounding like, you will not replace us, you meaning the minorities, whoever, people who are not white. And then some of it morphed into, Jews will not replace us. But on the Antifa side, you know, when uh, Milo Yiannopoulos or Ben Shapiro wanted to speak on campuses and the Antifa people started rioting, the Antifa people were screaming, free Palestine. And now you have this whole new movement of people believing that Israel is the world's number one enemy. And on the right wing side, people believing that the Jews in America are the number one enemy. So what I have to tell the Jews of, the, of America is do not get lost in the fog of the war between these two groups. Because right now these two groups are on the fringes, but I can tell you, I, I, already, I already see it. The left-wing media, the media who are mostly left-wing, classical liberals, are glossing over whatever Antifa does and maybe even normalizing them and they're basically just going to vilify one group. Not only that, eventually I think they'll just band together. I think the left, the classical left, in the media and in mainstream society of the United States of America, will band together with Antifa. And if they don't band together, they're just going to give them power. And then, in reaction to that, the alt-right is going to get stronger and bigger. And now you're just going to have, instead of both of them being fringe groups, you're going to have both of them being mainstream groups fighting against each other in a civil war. At the very least social, hopefully not with arms.
We're talking about not just, you know, uh, tiki torches from Walmart or, I don't know, clubs. We're talking about guns. I'm not telling you to get up today and pack your bags and go to Israel. What I'm telling you is, first of all, be awake, be vigilant, and don't get it twisted. You're a guest in this country. You know, don't get all excited, just like we got excited in Germany. One, some Jews were on the socialist side, you know, the beer hall putsch. Some, some Jews were on the nationalist side, some Jews were on the Weimar, some Jews were here. You know, Einstein was very smart. You know why Einstein was smart? Not because he was just because he was Einstein and he was a you know a world famous physicist. He was very smart because he saw the writing on the wall before it was even written, or as it was starting to be written. He got up and he left Germany. You guys should watch. There was a PBS special on him, and it shows how he was. He saw it. He saw it coming. Him and his wife, they applied to leave. Who knows what would have happened? Who knows? Who knows what the greatest mind? What what would happen to the greatest mind? Some of the greatest minds perished in the Holocaust. Friends, don't get me wrong. I don't think there's going to be a Holocaust like there was in Germany in this country. But I do think that after this whole thing is over, the quote unquote winner of this confrontation between the alt right and Antifa, they're going to be looking for answers. They're going to be looking for people to blame and if you know anything about Jewish history you know that there is only one group that they blame the most I don't have to tell you who that is have a good one guys